Hey guys, welcome to Bethel Online. My name is Jason, I'm one of the pastors here, and we're so glad you decided to make us a part of your weekend. No matter who you are, where you come from, we're so glad you're here. Our vision is to be a safe place for real people to encounter the real Jesus and experience real change. Our hope and our prayer is that no matter who you are or what you've been through, you know that you are loved and you are wanted here. We would love to get to know you better and help you connect with all that's going on. You can do this by going to our website at www.bethel.us or by downloading the Bethel app. You can find our app by searching Bethel Putco in your app store. Both online and in the app, you can fill out digital connection card. It only takes a minute and it'll help us know how to serve you better. Another way you can connect today is through giving. Your generosity at Bethel directly impacts God's mission to radically change people's lives in Putnam County and beyond. Through the ministries of Bethel and the many local and regional organizations we support, people are able to see the grace of God and how much He loves them. You can always give on our website at Bethel.us forward slash give or in the Bethel app. Thank you for partnering with us and making a difference. Well, thanks again for tuning in online today. Know that you are wanted and welcome here, and you are loved. I hope you all have a great day. Good morning and welcome to Bethel Online. We're so glad you joined us. This morning we're in week four of a series that we call Neglected Virtues. We live in a time and place where the opportunities to communicate are all over the place. I mean, you've got Messenger on Facebook, you've got all the avenues of Facebook and Twitter and, and nearly every possible social media platform has a way that you can direct message someone. We have cell phones on our hip or in our pocket all the time. We have access to email all the time right in our pocket so many ways to communicate and connect. And yet, all the research shows that people are experiencing a level of loneliness in our modern culture, despite all the opportunities to connect, we're lacking in community. Today, I wanna to talk about the importance of community in the life of the church and the life of God's people. You can go all the way back to the story of the beginning of time and find that after the creation of Adam, it took a very short period of time for God to come to the conclusion that man was not good alone. That left to our own loneliness and devices, we will often find ourselves in trouble. And while we can often, along with other people, find ourselves in trouble and making the same kind of bad decisions that we would alone, the truth is we're healthier and better when we're experiencing true community. You can get on social media and you might have 5,000 friends, but let's be honest, most of those relationships are surface relationships if they only exist through that platform. So the question becomes, how do we get better at having community, a God-given value and virtue? Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19, the early church was struggling with some of these things. And Paul is explaining to the early church, hey, you guys are no longer strangers or outsiders. What he's saying is that the church, the people of God exist together together. They're now brought together. And while many of them prior to this didn't know each other, didn't have a ton of connection with each other, one thing brought them together. It was the community around the resurrected Christ that brought people together. He says, you're no longer strangers or outsiders. You belong here. You belong in the community of believers. With as much right to the name Christian as anyone, Paul says, God is building a home and he is using us all. Irrespective of how we got here and what he is building, 
He is used the apostles and the prophets for the foundation, and now he's using you, fitting you in brick by brick, stone by stone, with Christ as the cornerstone. What Paul is saying is your part in the community, your part in the community of the congregation is important. I would encourage you, if you're watching online and you have the ability to come and be a part of weekly services or be a part of a small group, I would encourage you that your life can be fuller when you are living in community with other believers. So, but the reality is that while we were built for community, we have a tendency to drift from it. I'm guilty of this myself. I mean, we often can experience trauma at the hands of other people and criticism or discouragement at the hands of other people. And, and sometimes it, it, when we include others into the equation of our life, it can often make things really complex. I mean, it's one more place to be, one more person to think about. It's maybe even one more challenging person in our life that we have to think about in a life that already feels pretty complex. But the reality is we were made for community. It's not good for us to live alone. And we can find sometimes because of our experiences, this temptation to pull away from relationships. I mean, I even experience this sometimes when I get around big crowds of people, like there's just a part of me that's like, yeah, this is all nice and good. And we're all gathered for a reason. And maybe it's a concert or maybe it's a place, but maybe it's the grocery store. But sometimes I have these moments like in the gym when there are a lot of people around where I think I've got to get off to myself. And there's no harm with some alone time. But when our entire life is lived alone, when we're void of connection with other people, it's really damaging. And I have to fight the drift sometimes. I mean, I have three children, my wife, and a staff of people, and a church that I love, and a community where my kids go to school, and, and I have to fight the drift to want to kind of turn inside myself and just deal with my things and just acknowledge my issues and my things that are going on, and yet all of a sudden, we can begin to feel a real sense of loneliness. I've learned that it's entirely possible to be in a room of 5,000 people and feel incre 500 people and feel incredibly alone. And yet, we weren't meant to live life alone. So how do we fight the drift? Number one, remember the faithfulness of God. Oftentimes we drift because of pain we've experienced at the hands of other people and we put up walls and barriers and we kind of keep ourselves hold off so that we don't risk the pain again. And maybe you can go back to a place in your life where that began for you. And one of the reasons you kind of live this life of loneliness and this life separate from everyone else is because you've known some other people and you've dealt with some pain there. And often we can begin to focus on how maybe in those moments we felt abandoned or in those moments we were questioning where was God when that person made up a rumor or where was God when, when I, my character was attacked or where was God in those moments? But the truth is, if you're listening to this message, you've been brought through what you went through. But not only have you been brought through, I believe God wants you to experience healing. And while hurt can often happen at the hands of people, oftentimes God offers to heal us through people in our lives. We have to remember that God has been faithful. I believe one of the great habits of people who live a godly life is to recall the places of faithfulness in their life. There's a story in the book of Joshua and God's people are nearing, entering into the promised land. And Joshua tells the people to place some stones to remind them of how God brought them through. I think it's good if we want to maintain connection with other people to place some stones in our life and remind us of the people who walked with us and who the people who God sent and put into our lives. You know, the neighbor who came into our life, the coach who came into our life at the right time, and the friend who walked with us through a difficult time. Even the faulted people who have been brought into our lives, but, but maybe brought us change and growth that we needed in our life. I think it's a huge step to remember the faithfulness of God thus far. To recognize that while there may have been some things meant for evil in your life, that God can find a way to use them for good. That maybe the hurt that you experienced 
was something that God has used to put strength in you, to strengthen you and build you up, to build your self-confidence. Remember the faithfulness of God. Joshua said to the Israelites, in the future, your children will ask, what do these stones mean? And why would they ask that? Because they weren't there in that moment. They weren't seeing God come through. But the reminder would one day remind them how God brought them out of the wilderness and into the promised land. They would still experience challenges in the promised land. They would still experience struggles. It would continue to be a challenge. It has always been a challenge for God's people. And yet Joshua finds it necessary to remind the people to be grateful for the ways God had been faithful. He says, you can tell them this is where the Israelites crossed the Jordan on dry ground. Number two, if we want to fight the drift of pulling away, pulling away from others and living very much on our own, being disconnected from community with others, from real community with others, we need to learn to rely on God's people. The truth is that God uses His people and God's plan for reaching the world is to allow His transformed people to pour into the lives of others and walk with them as they transform. We say here at Bethel, when the real people encounter the real Jesus, they experience real change. And it's so often an opportunity of the Christ follower to share their life with others so that they can experience a connection, an intimacy that begins to allow to heal what they have experienced brokenness in. And we rely on God's people. That's why community is so important to the life of the believer. At Bethel, we encourage people to get in groups. We encourage people to connect. We encourage people to visit and connect with each other, get to know each other, get to know about each other. It's not because merely we need another name to know. It's because in life we desire to be fully known and still fully loved. And maybe the job of God's people is to know each other and love each other. And because of what can happen within the synergy of that decision, we can then be a people who are also going out and being vulnerable enough to love other people, to allow others into our life, to be able to trust that God is working even in the challenging situations of relationships. Studies show that the people who stay connected to a church body over a period of time go through incredible ups and downs in the organization they're in. There are times when they feel really connected. There are times when they feel like they're losing connection. But the thing that keeps them sticking to their local church family is relationships. I mean, I can't imagine not knowing some of the people in our church. I can't imagine not having connection with some of the people in our church who play a part of my daily life, the people that I work with, the people that I'm connected with, the people who I've been in small groups with and the truth is that often the difference between where we are and where God wants us to be depends on having the right people in your life. Unfortunately, sometimes we have to figure out who the wrong people are in our lives. We have to experience the pain of relationships that are out there rather than, that, that aren't great and healing relationships in order to appreciate those who allow us to be really and truly experiencing the love of God. The reality is for every person who will love you where you are and walk with you to where you are going, not every person is that person. And yet often God chooses to speak into the trauma and hurt and pain of our life by bringing others in who will help us to heal. I remember a time in my life when, um, I contracted a fungus in my lungs and it began to disseminate throughout my body. And I experienced what it was like to be sick for a long period of time. I was a young man and I had never experienced anything like that. I mean, I had broken bones and the bones healed and I got all my strength back. But over a period of time with this illness, the medicines literally changed my body. The steroids began to impact my my physical appearance, my physical capacity, the disease itself made things that I had once done easily with one hand, difficult jobs to do it all. And I was struggling in it and it felt incredibly lonely at times. But I remember connecting with a local man in the church that I was pastoring at the time. He was an older guy, an older farmer, 
and I was just really discouraged and I was just sharing with him how I was struggling to do simple jobs that I had once done easily and how I'd come to the conclusion that while I might regain some strength, I might be able to one day do some of those things again, my life was changed because of it. And this very strong, very tough, outwardly, uh, outwardly strong man began to tell me the story of how as a 17 year old, his life was forever changed by his leg getting caught in a baler. And then his entire life, he'd had to walk with a limp. And so anytime he went anywhere with his family, he was always struggling to keep up. And if you knew this man, he's probably the hardest worker I've ever known. He, he never turned down an opportunity to do something. He never let it hold him back. Over the course of his life, he had built an absolute massive farm. He had built up and done incredible work around his place. He found neat ways to do hard things despite the, the leg, the bad leg that he had. The skin on his leg would often during the work day would get cut and busted. And so when he looked at me and began to say, Nathan, I know what it's like. And the reality is it's just one of those things you'll have to push through. You'll have to come through it. Ultimately, you got to trust that God will use what you went through to help you understand where other people are. The difference often and walking with him during those days and working with him and him pushing me and him walking with me and him also being understanding of where I was and where I was mentally, his understanding played a huge role in me mentally healing and kind of getting back up and getting moving. See, the difference between where I was and where I needed to be was this farmer who I, who I worked around and worked with and was constantly with. God used a man who had been so focused on, on his life, but he used his story and he, he, gave me, he gave me his story and in doing that gave me motivation to grow. He gave me someone to watch and that connection that connection that I made through that story and through his life was hugely powerful for me. And I began to find myself crawling out of the mental hole of sorrow and sadness over what was lost and allowed me to begin to focus on what I could still do. See, it might be that the place you know God wants to take you will become more accessible to you once you have an authentic, real relationship with some other people who have maybe walked through what you have or maybe just people who are willing to walk with you through what you're dealing with. Community is important in the life of the believer. It might be that the very thing that has you stuck in so many places in life is that you, you don't have authentic relationships. You have these loose connections where people see a shell of who you are, but they don't really see the insides of what's going on in your life. Where, where you might feel like people love you, but they don't really know you. So how do we begin to make some of those relationships? Because let's be honest, there's not someone standing on every corner saying, I'd love to share my story with you and I'd love to walk with you. Many people, we just struggle to find those places. Here, here's some, some recommendations for how you might do that within the context of the church. Start serving with some other people. When there's an opportunity to serve, go work alongside other people. It makes for an organic opportunity to connect with people you don't know. So often we look for people who are just like us, but the real growth that God wants to give us is in some people who are totally different than us. Get in a rooted group or a small group within the life of the church. Here at Bethel, we have small groups. You are welcome to sign up for a rooted group. We're getting ready to start a rooted group this next week. It'd be a perfect opportunity for you to sit in a room of people in a safe environment, to get connected with the lives of other people, to hear their stories, to walk with them, to learn about Jesus together as a group. I would encourage you to go to our app and sign up for a group. Maybe even if you can't attend on Sunday, but you know there's a need for connection in your life, these groups provide a great opportunity for that. They provide a great opportunity to hear each other's stories and get to know other people. So often we walk by people every day that have something to add to our life, but we miss it because we lack authentic relationships, which brings me to point number three. If you really want to find connection with other people, sometimes you have to drop the wall and get real. The truth is we may be surrounded by people all the time, but we lack the authenticity 
to share our life and share our story. So often when Jesus heals people, he often asks them what they want, but then gives them what they need. So often in our life, we have to get honest with others and we have to be honest about our situation. And rather than holding up the pretense that we have it all together, we have to acknowledge that we don't. I remember for years struggling with anxiety and feeling like it was only me. It was only me, only to become a pastor and find out that much of the world we're around are people struggling in loneliness with anxiety or depression, walking alone. Both of those things will push you to, to distance yourself from people and to become inward in your thinking. And friends, sometimes to step out of where we're at, we have to let go of the fear of what it will take to get there, which often is vulnerability and being real. Proverbs 14, 7 says this, The words of the wise are like weapons of knowledge. If you need wise counsel, stay away from the fool. Maybe we need to find some wise people in our lives. We need to be prepared to get real and hear wisdom. I don't think that most of us don't have an, uh, access to truth or access to help. Many of us aren't willing to go to the places and subject ourselves to the time and the sharpening that God often wants to do in us. The Bible uses it like this, that you, you can sharpen iron with iron. And many of us, that's what happens when we get deeply connected with people and walk together. We sharpen each other. Walking with people will force you to become better at forgiving. Walking with people will force you to be more authentic if you really desire connection and community. It'll mean sharing your story and sharing your life. It'll mean you growing in your confidence of who you are in Christ so that you can share what Christ has done in yours. Number three, release the power of your story. I don't know about you, but... I have parts of my story that I like to tell. I have parts of my story that I don't love to talk about. As a matter of fact, earlier I talked a little bit about the illness that I had in the 2000s as a young man. I generally pr prefer that people don't see how it still impacts my breathing. As a matter of fact, I catch myself trying to hide being out of breath when I'm struggling. I've worked really hard to regain strength, and yet there are times in which the exhaustion still bothers me. And we often catch ourselves hiding those things. You know, we can't get help if we don't acknowledge issues. Release the power of your story. So often there's a story in our life and the healing can't begin until we begin to share it. And what if the pain you'd gone through or the thing that you've gone through is the very thing that God would choose to use for the person out there who needs somebody to walk with them. See, I believe that everybody needs God, everybody needs somebody, and somebody needs you. That there's someone out there that your story and your life alongside theirs can lead to the transformation that God chooses for all those who follow him. What are you doing to create authentic community? What are you doing to be a part of authentic community? And how much would our community be changed if the loneliness epidemic were dealt with in our community? I want to ask a couple questions. How has a connection with another person ever changed your life? Can, can you look back in your life and kind of see a place where God used a person in a key place in your life and you may have not survived without that person? Maybe it was your rough childhood and the kind people God put close by despite your tough circumstances. Maybe it was the generous person. Maybe it was the person who would listen to you when you felt unheard. Wouldn't you love to be that for someone else? It can only happen when we get outside of ourselves and into community with others. 
It can only happen when we begin to lay aside the fears and insecurities we have about ourselves and walk confidently in who God has called us to be, not in the identity of who I have been or what I've done, but in the identity of who I am in Christ. Can you think of a way that you can lean into your relationship with God or God's people this week? Some of you may just need to get real with someone in your life. You may be walking around about to break, but no one around knows it because you've not yet been willing to tell anyone. Maybe you find a place to, to share your story. You might actually find, like I did, as I worked amongst people in homeless shelters in Indianapolis as a college kid, that while you're going to be somebody for somebody and you're going with the intent to help someone else, that God uses that to begin to polish and sharpen you with a deeper understanding of others. It's often ignorance that makes us act horribly to others. I find it really hard over time as a pastor, there have been people that maybe were difficult or they sometimes bothered me or frustrated me. And then I would hear their story. I would think, why are they so critical? And then one day there would be this moment of authenticity and honesty and you would hear about how their entire childhood, they were just henpecked and picked at and mistreated and told how they never added up. Or the guy who boisterously pretends he has it all together sometimes and seems so shallow, you'll often find that he spent his whole life trying to prove that he's somebody. And in Christ, he is somebody and he needs to hear that. Rather than putting up the facade of having it all together, he needs to find a place where he can be loved for who he is, not who people think he is. How can you lean into your relationship with God or God's people this week? I would just really encourage you this morning, if you're wrestling with this message and you're set in loneliness, would you step out of your comfort zone and into community by joining a rooted group? You can go on our app and sign up through our app to be in a community group. If you reach out, we will reach back out to you and help you find a place and a time where you can meet. Maybe it's just simply finding someone that you can meet for coffee every now and then and have a real talk. Maybe it's for the first time pushing yourself outside of a comfort zone and actually letting someone know where you're at rather than where they think you're at. Maybe it's rather than just giving the quick, I'm fine when someone asks how you are, Maybe it's just saying, hey, you know what, sometimes I'm doing all right and then there's some places in life that I'm really hurting and struggling. I believe the people in the church should be the safest people to do that with. At Bethel, we expect it in the communities of our church. But we're gonna be a people who walk with you. My friend leads a recovery ministry and always says, we can't do your recovery for you, but we can walk with you while you recover. My friend, don't neglect the virtue of community in your life. You're missing something and others are missing it too by not having you as a part of your life. I love you, Bethel. Have a great week. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Are you ready to take your next step? We would love to hear from you. You can send an email to hello at Bethel.us. You can send us a message on Facebook or you can let us know in the Bethel app. And speaking of the Bethel app, Take a moment, if you haven't already, to go to your app store and search Bethel Putco to download our app. There's all kinds of great resources in the app. You can listen to messages, you can view the messages from Sunday morning, and you can also fill out a digital connect card. You can do that today and each week to let us know that you're tuning in. You can also find some great information about our Bethel Kids Ministry and our Be The One Student Ministries. Also in the app, you can give. It's one of three ways you can give with online giving at Bethel.us slash give in our app, Bethel Putco, or through text. Hey, thanks again for joining us. We hope you have a great day and know that you are loved.